Welcome to our next video. This one is a little different, but something you all can benefit from because we like to decorate our projects. We generally have a set of burning wires. Well, after a period of time using these things, eventually mine burned through the center and I need to replace them. So I had a set of four that I had made different diameters of wire. And I'm down to two. So I guess it's time for me to make a whole new set. So let's talk about what you can use. First of all, there's not a burning wire out there that should not have a handle. So you got a little bit of wood turning to do to make yourself a handle. Secondly, you need something that's going to create friction when it's pushed against the wood, not something too polished and too shiny. And not something that's too soft that when heated up might melt. So copper is out, so all that electrical wire that you're thinking about can't use it. You could go to the hardware store and pick up a ring of, I call this bell wire. I think I just paid 19 cents for this coil of steel wire. It's very rough. Uh, it's available in different gauges. And it. good thing about it, it's rough. So it will work. Here's a lifetime supply of burning wire material. Something else works really well is metal that has been twisted or braided. Think of fishing leaders for sturgeon and, and uh, heavy fish, fishing lead like that. Another thing that works really well, this is guitar strings. If you go to the local music store and pick up a set of steel guitar strings for each of the different uh, strings on the guitar, you're going to find different gauges of wire, and there's your set. Each of these then can be cut into pieces and used several different times. That's one possibility. I have available to me something that you may not have, but I'm going to use it. In surgery, many times when open chest surgery is done, uh, uh, the sternum needs to be stitched up after the surgery. So packages of uh, wires, stainless steel for surgery, are packed up so the surgeon picks what he wants and everything else, while still um, sterile, can't be used again. So they get thrown away and recycled. They come in different gauges. And on the end of each is one of these terribly dangerous looking hooks, which we will cut off. Well, I have already prepared a couple. And I just dropped one on the floor. But here's the other one. This is stainless steel. It's in various different gauges. It's stiff. It won't melt. The only problem with it is slightly too shiny, and when I get done making my burning wires, I'm going to take a piece of coarse sandpaper, and I'm going to stroke this to take some of the smoothness off of the surface. So, I'm going to make a set of burning wires. I'm going to make different sizes. Instead of using wood, I uh, bought a series of uh, dowels made from what's called Delarin. It's a plastic material. So I'm going to use this for handles, just to be different. I'm going to cut it, I'm going to shape the ends, put a bead on the end, and the number of beads is going to let me know which gauge I have. So I'm going to make several, and so I'm going to set up on the lathe, put this into the headstock, turn a bead, mark out the length, turn a bead, drill a hole to put the wire through, and part it off, and then make another one just like it, that gives me a pair of handles. So that's our process for today, and let's get started. Okay, we're going to start with our Delrin rod. Now I know if I stick it way out here, it has a tendency to flex a little bit, so I'm going to do the first end by putting this in the chuck as far in as I can get it. Chucking it down tight. And I've tried this skew chisel, and I've tried other tools, and I think we're going to find best results by using the standard shallow fluted gouge. I'm going to rough out a bead shape here first of all, and then by scraping with it, I'm going to pull in the rest of the shape. It comes in really, really nice. I don't even need the tailstock support at this point. I'll mark off the length and then reverse it in a minute. It's running true enough. So let's just... Doesn't like hanging out that far, it wants to vibrate. So, I'm 
and I needed it long enough to be able to make my full handle. And I'm just, just a little rounding. Get a little of my mark off the end of it here. Good enough. Now we want this to be about three inches. I've just measured from my own hand and it seems to be about the length I want. So let's figure out where three inches is. Right about here. So I'm going to reverse it. Part off the excess. Well, I should have marked it first, shouldn't I? That was an oversight. So now I know where three inches is. I'll reverse it. Here's my mark. Go to the parting tool. Cuts like butter, but it loves to wrap around things. Like that. So I just want to be able to see where my tool goes here. Okay, there's my next handle. And I'm going to bring this out just a little farther so I have a little bit more space to work. And this will not vibrate near as much because it's not quite as far out as last time. And look how much more true it's running. Well, I lied about that, didn't I? It does like to chatter. Plastics respond really well to scraping. Okay, there's handle one. I just need to make another one just like that. But before I go, this is three inches, so I'm going to go to an inch and a half, and I'm going to drill a little hole that I'm going to put the wire through which will be right about there. Again, just a mark. And I have a number 50 drill bit in my drill, which is going to be a large enough hole that all the wires will go through. Now, it's on a round surface, so I'm going to be very careful when I get started here. Pull it out, clean it, clean, okay, handle one's done, do another one just like it, I'm going to lay it up here, grab my piece of Deleron, oh, right here, Take it in here, put the bead on this one end, and we're not going to take you through making all the handles because they're all going to be the same, but I am going to do one here and I am going to do one in walnut for a different size wire. That way I'll be able to tell them apart. I think this really likes scraping. Really don't get any catches that way. Using the side of the shallow food gouge. And there's a little sharp corner, I didn't like that, so okay. Our three inches would be twice that, wouldn't it? There's our three. There's where we're going to part it off.
close to the chuck. I wonder where all the chips are going to wrap. Right between the cut and the chuck. Okay, your second handle. This piece we don't need. Too sharp for handle anyway. So we'll reverse this. I may as well make my. Uh, now I'll go ahead and turn it first. We do this one all by scraping. Okay, so now I need to mark an inch and a half for the drill hole. be perfect but that's it and now another carefully drilled hole well my black deller and handles are going to allow me to know where the heaviest of my wires are Key is not wanting to fit really well. Okay, so I have a pair of handles which we'll put a wire on later. And next thing we're going to do is work with a little piece of dowel. This is walnut. And it'll be really, really nice. So this is small enough. Oh, I thought it was small enough to go through the headstock. But it's not, so I'm going to have to go cut it off the bandsaw into pieces that are slightly longer than what I need. So give me a second, I'll cut this into some lengths and be right back. Okay, I went up to the bandsaw and cut this into pieces about seven inches long. Two, three inch handles and a little bit to hold on to. Uh, it's just a little bit too large to fit all the way through the bore of the lathe, but it'll be just fine at seven inches. So this is going to be for a smaller um, burning wire. Get my glasses which I put out of the range. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Bead on the end. How can I tell them apart? One's black and one's brown. It's so nice to turn wood again. Three inches. Find it, mark it. I can probably guess, but now that's a little close. I'm going to a little farther. I'm going to bang into the chuck while I'm doing this. I can see it. Part it off here. here, no reason I can't put the bead on the end of this one, oh, it's still here. Okay. I'll mark this for three while I'm at it. Okay, two to complete the opposite end on. Reverse. Keep it 
close in so I can get good hold and not too much vibration. Got to find one and a half and drill. easier than wood. It's one walnut. I know I'm changing the order just for fun. Now, we'll put the bead on it. Another pair of handles. So, I've got a set of Deleron for my heavy duty wire, which I'm going to use that steel wire. And the walnut, I'm going to put one of those stainless steel wires in that I showed you earlier and fasten those too. So they're going to pass through the hole, come around, be twisted. Now, I do a lot of spindle work, so my, hand, my wires need to be about eight, nine inches long. If you do bowls, you may want a longer one, but the problem with the longer ones, they're inappropriate for our spindle work. And since I do mostly spindle work that needs decoration, I'm going to keep the wires fairly short. So now it's a matter of finding the wires, cutting the wires, and fastening them down. And short as this may be, it is a lot of fun because we've got the chance of being able to use up wire, make decorative techniques. Replace older ones. So I said that's about the length I want. And the thing about storing these things, the other thing is, I don't know where to keep them, but I have, I have a place I hang them, but they do get mixed up with each other. So I need coating on the end so I can tell which is big and which is small. So I'm gonna make a little piece of wire take some pliers, cut it to length, and do some twisting. So I'm going to go to the shop, get a pair of appropriate pliers that have side cutters on them, and cut this wire and put it onto our handles. Be back again in a second. Cleaned up a little bit and ready to do some assembly. I have a pair of old-fashioned calipers, but I'm going to use this to measure the length of the wire. And so we'll do the heavy-duty black ones first, and I'll get the walnut out of the way. So I want it to be this long. And I'm going to need a little bit to wrap on each end. So I'm going to cut it just about here, a pair of linesman's cutters. Out of the picture. Wire through the handle. Bring it around. And using my linesman's pliers, twist, I twist. There's one end. Same thing. Coming around. Pliers, grab it at the end. Now that's a little long, so I'll cut the tail off. Now you could put a little glue on here if you wanted to. 
I have found is not necessary, but there's a heavy set of that burning wire will do a lot of fairly large projects. So now let's take a look at the walnut handles, which I'm going to do something smaller on. In this case, I'm using a piece of guitar string. It's fairly flexible. It's steel. And as you see, pretty daggone springy too. So let's start here. Handle through. We do the same process. Now twisting with your fingers you stand a chance of poking yourself with the wire. You also may not get as tight a twist as you'd like. Note this twisted all the way right up to the handle. And I've got a tag I want to lose. Need that little tag end. And we want it about that long. So that's here. And enough to cut the wrap. I filed the end of that on the floor. So it'll really be easy to find. And I'll turn this around so we can see it better. Grab it with my pliers. Well, I'm have problem grabbing. Isn't that interesting? There we go. Couldn't get a grip. And a little tag end. There we go. And make sure that closes down. Okay. So we have a lightweight, we have a heavyweight. Now this one is a little shiny, so I brought a piece of 120 sandpaper over here. The purpose is just to kind of rough it up a little bit. And it's going to work fine. So let's do a quick demonstration. We've got to make sure it works. So I'm going to take a piece of this very special test material here very similar to the uh, wooden dowel we used, but test material. And if I'm going to burn a heavy duty line in this, I'm going to take my tool rest out and get it out of the way. And I'm not, well shoot, I do need my tool rest first, don't I? Because if I just try to burn without putting some sort of a mark on here, that wire is going to slip and slide. So I need to Rearrange here just a little bit because I need to come in with my tool rest, take my skew chisel. With my skew, I'm just going to put a little group. Every time I do a burning, I always put a mark in first. So let's one test mark, two test marks, three. Now I have a place to burn, and the tool rest goes away. And let's do the heavy one first. I like speed when I do this. Over the top, holding the handles, never on your finger. Second one. Second one happened easier because the wire was already warmed up a little bit. Now that surface is not okay. But we'll come back to that later. Let's take the small one in the last two. Ooh, that went fast. Now, what we have to do, if you look at this up close, you would see that it's frayed edges where the wood has been forced up and burned. So what you need to always do is come back at the very end and touch it lightly with your sandpaper. And what that does is clean up the surface. So now I have two really heavy marks and two really light marks. And that's kind of going to be nice. And I've got great wires to work with. So find a dowel, piece of plastic, old pen blank might work, and uh, guitar strings, sturgeon leader, uh, steel bell wire, 
whatever you can find that's rough, not copper, not brass. Uh, braided or twisted would be nice too if you can find it. But anyway, make up a nice set of burning wires. It always decorates up spindle projects. Hope you have fun doing this and using your new burning wires. We'll see you in the next video. Got to add a postscript, and it's right here with all the safety announcements. I said this earlier, but I need to reinforce. You take this wire, wrap it around your finger, and start making that cut. You're going to be like one of the pictures that Dave found on the internet where somebody looks like the four fingered wood turner. That will snap your finger off in no time at all. Never, even holding it like this, don't even do that because then it can still grab your finger in some strange way or pierce your skin. Without that handle, it's not a burning wire and it's not a lathe tool. It's just a piece of wire that can do damage. So be sure to put those handles on. If you don't believe me, go out and start doing a YouTube search on burning wire accidents and you'll find a lot of them. Be careful. See you later.